Hi everybody, I'm Amy from Neurotic Mom Bakes. Welcome back to my kitchen. Let's make meringues today. Um, I started making these a couple months ago for the first time and I have learned all the ins and outs of what works and what doesn't and I've tweaked my recipe and and I think I finally perfected it and I'm so excited to show you how to do these. They're quite simple um, if you do things exactly right. It's a little bit time consuming to cook them but with some good planning I found that I can start my meringues and put them in the oven and then do something else, run to the store, clean my house, make other components of my cakes. Um, but just know that they take a couple hours in the oven at least um, to dry out. You're not really cooking them, you're more drying out the egg whites. But anyway, let's get started. Um, this is pretty simple. All you're going to need are three egg whites at room temperature. This is very important. They have to be at room temperature. Um, if you want to speed up the process, I will get three full eggs and put them in warm water for about 10 minutes. And then just you want to crack and get the egg whites in there. Absolutely no yolk. Uh, if you have the tiniest bit of grease or fat, it will not work. And speaking of that, to completely, even though these are straight out of the dishwasher, I want to be absolutely sure that there is no grease in here. So I'm going to get vinegar, white vinegar. Lemon juice also works. Either one works. I like the white vinegar just because that tiniest drop of vinegar in there does help the egg whites um, get a little more fluffy. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white vinegar and I'm going to wipe the inside of my bowl. This is going to be absolutely ensures that there is no grease. I will also wipe down, put a little bit of vinegar on the whisk attachment. You need the whisk attachment for this one. Okay, set that aside. So in addition to the egg whites and the vinegar to wipe down your bowl, you're going to need a half a cup of sugar, just a pinch of salt, and just a less than a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Um, just a couple pinches of cream of tartar. I'm going to get my bowl on here and make sure to check the drop down description box. I will have the written down recipe in there in both cups and grams. There we go. Okay, got my egg whites. I'm going to put them in the bowl first. Now make sure you follow this process exactly. There are so many things that are going to inhibit the, the egg whites being able to inflate and um, get the stiff peaks that you're looking for. So to start, I'm going to start on kind of a medium speed and I'm just going to get them barely frothy and then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and just a pinch or a couple shakes of salt. Okay, so it's barely getting frothy, foamy, and at the beginning stages I'm going to add just that quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and just two or three shakes of salt, that's it. Now I'm going to let this go until it about doubles in size. Um, it's still going to be in a foamy state, but at that point I'm going to start adding my sugar. So I'm gonna let this go a minute. Okay, I just want to show you what this looks like when I start adding the sugar. You want to add the sugar extremely gradually, like a quarter teaspoon at a time. I will slowly, and it's time consuming, but it's worth it because you will get better definition on your meringues and your, it, it will, you want the sugar to dissolve and it will give a really glossy, shiny, pretty appearance. So at this point, on medium to medium high, I'm gonna add the sugar quarter teaspoon at a time. It's a half a cup of sugar. Okay, phew, that took forever. Um, but I've got all my sugar in there. 
Now I'm gonna let it go on almost high full speed for a while. You want very stiff peaks, um, so I would say six, seven, eight minutes. We're gonna go. Don't add your flavoring or coloring yet. You wanna make sure these get all the way whipped first. Oh, I think we're there. Oh, that didn't take as long as I, yep, we're there. Okay. Um, I usually double or triple this because I'm making massive amounts of meringues. Um, that was maybe two to three minutes. So, at this point you want to work quickly and you want to handle it as little as possible. Those air bubbles are dissolving even as I speak. Um, so let's get going. I'm gonna add a drop of red food color. Today I'm gonna do like little heart-shaped ones. Valentine's is coming up, but you can do anything. Um, I'm gonna add, you can flavor it with anything you'd like, vanilla, um, today I'm using pure almond extract, peppermint is really, really good, coconut would work, um, or you can just leave it plain. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of almond extract, and just with like a drop of food coloring, maybe a couple drops, and let that go. Perfect. Again, not too much, not too much. Just enough to get it mixed in there. See those stiff peaks? See how it doesn't fold over at all? That's what you're looking for. Just barely get the flavoring and the coloring in there and the rest you're gonna do with a spatula. There it is. Okay. So it's not all the way mixed in yet. I'm just gonna get all that coloring in. Again, the less you work it, the better. Every fold kills some of those air bubbles and you won't have as much definition on your meringue shapes. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. There we go, that's all I want. I have two piping bags. So I want some different textures and definition, and I'm going to grab a spoon, and I'm only gonna pour half, or put half of this into my piping bag. You'll see why. I'm gonna do two colors, because Valentine's is coming up. I'm doing pink and purple. You can divide it before the food coloring if you need to do two totally different colors. Um, divide it and then add your food coloring. Got about half in there. Perfect. Okay. Squeeze it down, set it aside for one second. Now, to make purple, I've already got this kind of pink shade. Um, I'm going to add one drop of blue. Let's see what that does. Gently fold, don't stir, gently, gently fold. It's gonna be, it's gonna be more than that. Okay, so we're getting a little purple color here with the red and the blue. Let's see that. There we go, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna ha I have my second piping bag with a different tip. The first one was the Wilton 1M. This one is the, Wilt it's the Open Star. I think it's called the 8B. I gotta check that. I'll put that in the drop down box too. But there's lots of different brands of tips. Um, I just call this one the open star. You could do the round one. You could, you could do anything. It doesn't really matter. Okay, got my two colors. Now, the possibilities are endless with meringues. You can do, and you can pipe out just cookies, any shape, really anything works. Um, pops are really fun little lollipops. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of, a couple of each, different different things today. 
Um, I have also found through trial and error that the best thing to put on the bottom of your baking sheet is tin foil. Don't spray it or anything, just basic tin foil and the meringues peel right off when they're finished. Um, I've tried parchment and wax paper and they peel off, but it was a lot trickier. It's a lot more difficult to get them uh, off of the parchment paper. Okay, I have paper straws. They will not burn in the oven. Paper works just fine. And again, the oven's at a very, very low temperature. So you're not really cooking. You're more dehydrating or drying out the egg whites. That's what takes so long. So I'm cutting these in half. And we're gonna make some cute little round and heart-shaped meringue pops. So first thing I'm gonna do is I, just to hold the straw in place, I'm just gonna put a tiny little dot, place the straw in there, and we're gonna start by just piping out a heart shape. And then just for some different color and texture, I'm gonna pipe little stars in the center. And just for fun, you don't have to, but you can add some cute little sprinkles. You can um, dust them with some glittery lust, edible luster dust, or you can just leave them as is. A um, couple different ways you can do some different hearts. Let's try a different way here. I'm gonna get my ink, and we're just gonna start by just piping little stars in a heart shape. If you wanted to have a template or trace something out with a pencil or an edible marker, you can totally do that. I just like to eyeball and freehand everything. Okay, add sprinkles if you want. But do you see how the egg whites being nice and stiff like this, you get the definition. See, I've done it before where I over stirred or didn't whip them enough and they start to run together and deflate a little bit. Oh, there, I like that one. Okay, now once I've run out of room um, to do the, the little meringue pops, now I'll just pipe out some little cookies. Little star shaped. You can swirl them. You can like double stack them. You could mix the colors up. Think how fun these would be like a bridal shower or birthday party. Let's try this. Let's try some, just some plain ones. Oh, and these will not spread in the oven. That's the beauty of these. So you can put them as close together as you want. And they hold their shape. I've done Christmas trees. I've done little snowmen. But really, I just, I love to just eat the cookies, the little drops. All right, let's do a couple more pops. See how else we can vary this. Let's try another heart. Okay. 
favorite one. All right, and then I'm just gonna finish some using all my meringue with some little, some little extra cookies. Okay, I think we're done. Now, I've also tested different oven temperatures, different baking times, and what I have found that works the best, again, every oven is a little different. Um, I bake these for one hour at 225 degrees, and then I turn the oven off. I don't take them out, I leave them in there. I turn the oven off and let them continue drying out in just that warm oven. Try not to open the door too much for another full hour. So it takes <clears throat> two hours to get these done. So I set my timer again, 225 in the oven, uh, baking for one hour, turn the oven off and let them sit for another hour. Now they can sit longer than that. I've actually um, turned the oven off and gone to bed and had them sit in the oven overnight. That's not gonna hurt them, or I've had to go teach ballet class or run to the store or whatever I've done. Um, just make sure you're there at the hour mark to turn your oven off, and then they can stay in there just at least one more hour or longer, um, whenever you have time to get back to them. So these are gonna go in. Just right in the middle rack. Works. All right, so I've got my meringues out of the oven and um, you can see they hold together nicely. Here's a couple of the meringue pops I've got here. And then just these cute little cookies. You can just, I just actually leave them at room temperature. They'll stay good for three, four, five days. Um, you can put them in a, like a, a, a container, a plastic container, Tupperware container. Um, I've never tried refrigerating them, so I just, I think they stay best, honestly, at room temperature, but they're really, really good. I'm so glad you could join me today here in my kitchen at Neurotic Mom Bakes. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this, and you can catch me on Instagram at Neurotic Mom.